white paper. You guys. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay. Can you introduce yourself? Oh, yes. Um, good afternoon. I'm Superintendent Judy Scannell. And um, I would like to introduce um, everybody that's standing at the podium with me today. I have Mayor Stephen Zani, Police Chief Joseph Solomon, Captain Tom Fran, Principal Jim Juker of the High School, Associate Principal Kristen Thomas, Associate Principal Maria McLaughlin, Associate Principal Rich Baden, Associate Principal A.D. Jim Wayman, and Captain Mahoney. Thank you all for coming this afternoon. We're here to speak to you about the incident that happened at Methuen High School yesterday afternoon. Um, this incident involved a student with threatening verbal verbiage to other students within the school system, particularly at the high school. What went down is a student came and reported this verbiage to our associate principal at the high school, and from that point on, the principal acted quickly and swiftly and moved forward and followed the correct protocol. I am now going to ask the police chief to step up to the podium and he can walk you through the next steps. Good afternoon, uh, thank you for coming. Uh, what occurred after the school had found out about it, they notified our school resource officer, and in Methuen we're lucky enough to have an officer in every single school. The school resource officer began an investigation. That investigation continued from yesterday afternoon till somewhere around almost 8 o'clock this morning. Uh, during the investigative phase, uh, we determined enough probable cause to make an arrest. Um, the subject was arrested, and the subject was charged with uh, three crimes. Uh, the first charge was threat to commit murder, the second charge was intimidation of a witness, and the third charge was willful, willfully communicating a threat concerning, concerning a dangerous item uh, would be present during an attack. Uh, the subject was placed under arrest on those charges, transported here to the PD and processed. Uh, the judge at large Supreme court has impounded the file, so there's a lot of information that we weren't able to speak about. Um, after that situation occurred in our final uh, preliminary interviews were done in the morning. I communicated to the superintendent it was okay to put the word out, and the superintendent did a connect ed call, and we did a social media post putting the word out that the situation was under control, and at no time uh, was anybody in danger during the upcoming school day. That has been a concern of some people, and the reason for the delayed notice was because of investigative necessity. Um, after that, the subject was uh, interviewed here processed, uh, he's been arraigned in Lawrence District Court, and he's being held as a danger, pending a dangerousness hearing on January 4th, 2013. Chief, at any time did you find any weapons or any notes that may have led you to believe that he was dangerous? We have not found any weapons, but we have found um, some note material, but we're unable to speak about it because of the empowerment order issued by the judge. But based upon the information that we have recovered, it does not appear to us to be an unsupported threat. Not to say that it would have actually come to fruition and occurred, but we get threats from time to time and we investigate them and we put them in a, um, you know, on a chain as to the levels of uh, dangerousness. We would uh, consider that this was an absolutely dangerous situation. But at no time, because of the student who came forward right away, do we believe anyone was in specific danger that it was going to occur before we were able to investigate. So, Chief, do you actually think you might have gone through with this? Is that what you're saying? We believe that, based upon what uh, the knowledge is that we have that we can't speak to, that there was a potential that something could have occurred. We don't know exactly how serious it would have been, but we do have concern that you know it was more than the average uh, veil threat that we hear from time to time throughout the school years. So, Did Chief, was there a working plan at the beginnings of that? There, there's no um, specific evidence that uh, about a specific type of plan, but based on the evidence that we've gathered, uh, there was uh, it was definitely something that was in the works. As to the specifics, was there an actual drawn-out plan? I can't speak to that because of the empowerment, but it is something that, you know, from my years of uh, investigating school incidents, it, it did raise 
all of our eyebrows. Now we understand from being in court earlier today that he lived at St. Anne's home. Why was he able to go to a public school if there were some kind of behavioral issues there? Because again of the apartment, I'm not allowed to speak to where the person lived. Uh, I can't confirm or deny that, but what I can tell you is if you're a resident in the city of Methuen, regardless of if you're in your house or in a residential program, it, the responsibility to educate falls back onto the schools, and we could have the superintendent speak to that if you'd like. Superintendent, could you also, I, I wouldn't mind following up her question with, with how long the student had been in the middle of the school? What I can say to you is the student um, registered at Methuen High School Midway last year. Is he a senior now? Um, a junior. The yeah. student is a junior. And could you, could, did, um, I don't know if you could answer her question about kind of like, you know, students who are in residential programs, there you, you guys have an obligation to educate them. Yes, and I really cannot um, speak to that right now because of the law that, do, that governs this child's privacy. Superintendent, could you tell us about his interactions with other students? Did <coughs> he have a problem with his past? Or did um, he have a I, nothing that I know of. Can you tell us what kind of student he was? I mean, he's been at the school for a year and a half. Right. I mean, did he get along with kids? I was he a troublemaker? Um, nothing jumps out. Nothing that I've, has ever been shared with me. Well, what do you make of this overall you know, threat that was going on? Um, what I will say is we do take this very seriously. I think you all see that by all of us standing here. We do not tolerate threats, period. So again, as I stated, the administration followed protocol to a T. They acted swiftly. We do have a great relationship with the Methuen Police Department. We do have school service offices at every one of our schools. So we have this process in place. Everybody moves. We make the calls, and then the process begins. Now, we understand there was a young girl who he was talking to, who he relayed this threat to, and that that young girl was threatened that if she told anyone, he was going to shoot her first. Can you tell us about that person? Is she okay? Is she yes. Yes, going she is. to school, receiving yes. counseling? Uh, she is She is fine. That, that is what I can say. Superintendent, was he released for, uh, removed from school yesterday? Um, the student, when this occurred, was taken out of class, he then spent the next hour or so with his associate principal. He never left the associate principal ever, and the investigation started there with the principal. What was his demeanor while he was being, after he was taken out of class, he was being held? I was not there, so I cannot answer is, that. Is, is the associate, associate principal, principal there? Um, yes. Can you just tell us a little bit about his demeanor after, after he was being held? Um, he, he filled the, the questions appropriately as I asked him, and he um, he answered um, every question that he was asked. And what what did you ask him? I can't release that information. But his, his I guess his, his mood or his his demeanor did he seem? I, I, could you tell us a little more about that? Um, all I can say is is he is he, is he sat um, and, and answered questions and and he, and he answered every question that I did ask him. And this is this happened where. In my, in my office, okay. Was he upset? Was he irritable? Uh, I'm going to just step in for a moment. I'm going to ask him not to answer specific questions beyond that, just because of we have an issue with the empowerment and we have an issue with the investigation. I don't want to let too much of that information out because even though the subject's in custody, the investigation is still ongoing and there's still interviews being conducted. So um, uh, I would have to ask for a law enforcement standpoint that he not answer any more of those questions. Chief, could you say something about the fact that the young girl came forward and what that's done? I mean, she give credit to her, I guess, for the fact that she actually stepped forward and made people aware of this. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, we speak about courage all the time. And courage, whether or not you feel you're being bullied, or courage to stand up and uh, speak out when you find things that are wrong. The uh, work that the school department does, and a lot of it that we do cooperatively with them, speaks about self-esteem and courage. And you know, we really have to give kudos to this girl. It's not an easy thing, particularly if you feel that you may be in fear and there's a serious threat, to stand up, come forward, let yourself be known. And we credit her for being a role model for all other students. And we ask that all other students in any time in the future, if they come across a situation like this, they do exactly what she did. Uh, as we've seen in the past from other incidents throughout the country, had students who have known about plans come forward, 
things may, may have been different. So absolutely, uh, this girl uh, deserves a well thank you, and we appreciate it, and she is a model of courage for everybody. Was he taken into custody this morning? He was taken into custody last night. Okay. And can you tell us the circumstances of when he relayed this threat to her? Were they at the lunchroom? Were they at a locker? Were I, because of the paperwork and the investigation empowerment, we're not allowed to speak to those specifics as to when it occurred. But I can't tell you, as soon as the school knew, we knew, and the investigation began. But as to when it, the specifics occurred, uh, I've been asked not to speak about that. Was the school ever put into lockdown? No, the school was not put into lockdown because based on the assessment, there was no immediate threat. It was a single person um, allegation. Uh, the person was controlled in an environment where they wouldn't be able to do any issues and there was no other concern that there was another threat out there. So no, there was no need for a lockdown. And in Methuen, now that you bring that up, uh, since the superintendent's been the superintendent, we do routine lockdowns and we actually do police lockdowns where the police officers respond to mock drill two or three times a year. So it is something the school is accustomed to. It's routine for us and it wouldn't have been an issue, but at that point the assessment was it was not necessary. Uh, I would like to just uh, step off for a moment, and Mayor Stevens, I would like to uh, say a couple of words. Thank you, Chief. I, just as you all heard uh, the last few minutes, this was conducted very professionally. It was handled swiftly. It is under investigation, as the Chief says, and I'm sure you'll be hearing more the next day or two. But I just want to thank our school administration, our police department, and the way it was handled and conducted. And it was no safety to students at all. They were all safe. And I feel very comfortable in what was done over the course of the last day. So I thank you all for coming, and I'm sure in the future we'll be hearing much more. Thank you. What's your name, sir? What's your name? Steve Zani. Can you spell that for us, sir? Yeah, last name is Z-A-N-N-I. Thank you. Comments on that, is it or P-H? S-T-P-H-E-N. Can we get your spelling, too? Yes, Joseph, uh, J-O-S-E-P-H, Solomon, S-O-L-O-M-O-N, and the superintendents? Yes. Judy Scannell, S C A N N E L L. Judy with an I or Y? Right, thank you everybody for coming. We appreciate it. Kimberly. L L E L L.